Hey, hello everybody. This is Ryan here. Um, today I'm going to show you all how to save about 200 bucks by changing your own front shocks. Um, I know the last ones I bought at uh, Kenworth, they were $100 a piece for OEMs. Um, I was able to cross the number on these and got Monroe's or uh, Gabriel's, um, which are a pretty good shock. Uh, I got those on Amazon for $50 a piece, so I already saved $100 just by getting aftermarket shocks, which are just as good or maybe even better than the, the pack car shocks. Um, I noticed when I was at TA the other day, get, I put new steers on this truck. Uh, they were getting pretty nasty looking. I uh, had a little over 100000 so I just, usually 100000 I just I just change them out just for safety's sake. Because uh, you don't want a steer tire blowing out when you, you know, you're running road speed somewhere, especially out west where the speed limits are higher. Um... So, like I said, I noticed uh, my shocks, they kind of, they, by the wear I had on the uh, steer tires, and uh, your tire retailer can, can kind of show you that, I noticed that the, the shocks need to be replaced. Uh, I usually try to do them every 50 to 100,000 miles, depending on where I'm running. If you're running back east where the roads are terrible, I'd probably opt to do them about 50,000, change them out. But, um, anyways, when I was down at the TA, uh, down in uh, Eloy, Arizona, I was looking at the uh, their little price board in there, and they're charging $45.00 per shock to change out a shock so 50 bucks basically plus they're going to charge you tax a shop fee and if you're buying shocks from them they're going to be more than what kenworth is or whatever your dealer is everything i bought had to buy on the road from the ta or a truck stop is usually 20 to 50 percent markup than what it is oem so if you go in there you pay 50 bucks each to give them change you're at a hundred dollars then I would imagine you're going to pay at least $100. So you got $300 to change two shocks on the front. And I just changed the other side on this truck. And it literally took me 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with it here and show you all what you got to do. Um, one thing you're going to need, a hammer, 15 16 wrench, a breaker bar, pry bar, um, a heel bar, or some type of lining bar. Makes it a little bit easier, even a big screwdriver. Half inch ratchet, 15 16 socket. And uh, the sizes are dependent on your model. This is probably a metric, but a 15 16 uh, fits as well. There's some some sizes that across, you know, like a 19 millimeter and a three quarter are the same, a 13 millimeter and a half inch are roughly the same. It's that type of deal. But um, 15 16 fits it pretty snug, so that's what I'm using. I'd also have a half inch uh, battery powered impact, which um, you may or may not need. You don't have to have it. You can use wrenches and breaker bars. But um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it here. First thing you gotta do is break his top bolt loose. It's pretty easy to break loose. Go ahead and break the bottom one loose. Easy as well. And just for time's sake, I'm gonna use the impact on this top one. It wasn't snowing when I started this, but. Welcome to Northeast Ohio. Let's go ahead and pull that off. Make sure you save the washers, nut, put it off to the side. It's almost there. Let's get it and scratch it on the bottom. This bottom one, it's a shoulder stud basically, so you won't have to um, put a wrench or anything on the back side of it because it's it's fixed to the uh, suspension there. Pull 
that off. Got a big washer there. Head off to the side. We don't need that. Pull it out. And just kind of work it back and forth. You can see, you can see that's just, there's nothing left there, it's shot, you know, you should have a lot more tension. You know, you're driving down the road and it's not doing anything. You can just even hear the fluid in there, air going and everything. So those are shot. And there's a new one. This model, you got two rubber bushings, this is steel, so if you get one and you just got steel here and you don't have any rubber bushings, and the old one had rubber bushings, I wouldn't recommend using the old bushings, they're most likely wore out. So um, if you don't have the new bushings, you need to make sure you got a shock that has them, or you need to go back to where you got the shocks at and figure out where the bushings are if you have to buy them separate or whatever. Normally they come with them. So this, this is got a tapered end. Um, you want the, the, sh the smaller side to be towards the tire. Um, this does have a big washer down here on this shoulder, but just leave that on there if it doesn't come off. So you put that on with the, uh, the tapered end, the smaller side of the taper towards the tire. Go ahead and put your shock on. Then on this side, you're going to put the smaller side of the taper inboard, so the bigger side will be out towards the tire. Set it on. Put your washer on. Your washer goes with the bevel side out towards us, so you'll be pointing. Looking at it as a dish, it'd be pointing towards the tire. Same way it came off. Put the nut on. Take the ratchet. Just get it snug to retain the position of those two bushings. You just don't want them moving around. Don't get it too tight yet. Just a little bit of pressure on those rubber bushings. That's all you need. Put it in position. And as you can see, that is a lot harder to pull up than the one we just took off. And that's a good thing. Go ahead and line it up. On the other side, this was a little compressed. So I had to take my pry bar and uh, get one side started and then kind of put it in here like this. And, and expand it and at the same time press the shock up into position. Um, and it's like the other side was a little bit tighter, so I had to use this lining bar you know, to get it lined up where I want it. This side's fine, so we don't need to use it. Uh, take your bolt. My final torque or tighten, tightening, I like to tighten on the nut side so that way you're not putting all that torque on that the length of that longer bolt. So try to get your final, you know, hoorah there on the, uh, on the nut itself. So that should be good there. Go back down. Tighten the uh, bottom stuff. Now like I said, this is a shoulder bolt so it's it's, it's only going to go so tight and it's going to gonna bottom out and stop. And you don't want to go much tighter than that because you get overzealous with it, you could, I mean, in some cases you can break that stud off. <laughs> I 
that's it. I mean, I, from the time I started, I don't think that even, we're at five minutes maybe. So, um, like I said, if you want to, most of these tools, I mean, I got a little bit more expensive stuff because I was a mechanic for, a professional mechanic for several years. And, um, you know, I've got snap on Mac, all that good stuff. But you can go to Harbor Freight and you can probably get 50 to to $100 worth of tools. And you can do most, about anything you need to do on one of these trucks. So, it saved you a lot of money, just this simple act here. I know from, if I was going to drive in the TA, I'd probably be at a minimum of $200 saved. And you're probably going to be sitting there half the day. So, yeah, I can figure in your time factor. And I like doing things myself anyways, just for the peace of mind. So, uh, one last thing I'll show you guys if you're, uh, you know, on pack car shops anyways. Uh, the number for the, these, the pack car number, this is a T660 Kenworth, the 2013, and these are original pack car shocks. The part number on these, these are a B71-1001-A, dash dash and these cross to uh, 85070 um, Gabriels, HDs. So if you can get that number, that part number off there, there's a couple other numbers on here, those aren't the part numbers, that B71-1001A, you can usually Google those numbers, or if you got a freight line or whatever you got, to uh, try to cross that, to get an aftermarket number, or even go to Napa or whatever, but most places can, uh, they can cross it for you. But um, that's pretty much it, hope this helps you all, hope to save a little bit of money, a little bit of time, and um, we'll see you next time.